my dad would be just so pleased to accept this honor. He would be saying a huge thank you to Bernie O'Keefe and Dave Mills for putting together such a program and including him in it. My dad never in Bristol coached a team. He never scored a point. He came here after a successful career working in sports in the 1920s and 30s at a little high school in South Windsor, Connecticut, Ellsworth High School, where he worked with Carl Magnuson and Hugh Greer, and they produced three state championships in a row in Class C basketball. One of his students, the wife of the captain of those teams, was willing to come down, a very young lady from South Windsor, Connecticut, representing Ellsworth High School, and my father during the 1930s, Selmer Barry Pease, sitting right here. But when, he, when my dad arrived in Bristol, he found that he was lucky, because he found, besides Carl Magnuson and later George Perry, he found the Monaghans. And boy, they were friends. They both, Tom's grandfather and his uncle, they would sit with my dad and they would bounce ideas off who should be playing, who wouldn't be playing. Back in the 1940s at the park, they'd sit there in those swings and watch kids playing basketball and talk over who would be playing. But that's not what made him special to the rest of the city. There's a group of people out of that area that went to Rockwell Park Playground and other playgrounds in Bristol. My dad used to take his car, pack 13 kids into the car, and they would go around the city of Bristol, playground against playground. He'd umpire the game. I'm looking over here. Mr. O'Brien was involved in some of that. Mr. Lodovico over there. Um, Frank Nicastro back there. All had memories of this man with a big smile who loved sports. Nobody ever remembered the league standings, but kids played baseball. In the remarkable part, these kids would go on into high school, and my dad had the memory. He could remember what every kid did in a ball game. And he could sit down with them individually and talk it over. He was always just a friend, while he was still being what he loved most, a Latin teacher, where that continued. And there were certain people who would say, Loretta Teven. I mean, he was so proud of the Loretta Teven. But we think of the O'Brien boys in basketball, not from my dad. They didn't matter at all. It was Janet O'Brien Rajat who was an outstanding scholar and went on to a career in teaching. But my dad's sense of humor was something that people just could relate with. It was subtle. One of his friends from South Windsor, I was reading about what somebody had written. I mean, he says, John, I just remembered we used to always go into Hartford to the Old Stakes Theater and see a vaudeville act. And he said, you would never at all, would you ever sit down in front? How come? Why wouldn't you sit in front? And my dad told them, I don't want any of those jokes going over my head. <laughs> it was bad. I mean, he was, he, he grew up in that type of humor carried him for years. He, he loved the athletes. As I looked around, I asked him once, from his standpoint, who he considered, somebody that watched from the 1940s to the 80s, who was the best basketball player he saw in Bristol. He thought about it for a few minutes, and he said, Teddy Brennan. So the ones from the 40s would remember Teddy and Teddy's part of the Hall of Fame. 
So thank you all for just letting me represent my dad. Because my dad loved the children of Bristol. He, he was there as their friend. Um, he wasn't their coach. But there's a huge group of people. Maybe we should do that just how this one man loving sports from the 40s to the 1980s touched people's lives. So anybody that knew my dad, could they stand up? Anybody that knew my dad and he was part of their lives? Every one of them would have special stories about him, but the best one happened to me this spring. Um, last May, some woman came up and said, I had your dad in Latin, which isn't an unusual thing for me to have people come up that I don't know and start raving about what a man he was, what a teacher he was. And she said, I was telling my daughter about your dad. And she said, we used to wait at the on the corner of Boardman, Collins, and Farmington Avenue every morning. And your dad would be walking to school. And we all walked to school with your dad. Of anything I've ever heard of anybody in education, I never heard of high school students waiting to walk to school and walk home with their teacher because he was so much fun to be with, even though he had the most highest standings for his Latin scholars that won prizes all over the nation. But I would be defunct at the end if I didn't come back and say, my dad thought he was really privileged to work time with your grandfather and your uncle and most of all, my dad thought the world of your father, Ed. Thank you.